What, um, sort of style, guess, what sort of style does he like to play? The high press. That's it, the high press, yeah. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. So, <laughs> yeah, the Gagan press. <laughs> yeah. With, I, with plenty think, of round doitos. <laughs> Andy, Andy, <laughs> so please, round please, doitos. please continue. Andy. <laughs> Aren't, they, aren't some uh, uh, fans who who dislike Schalke they call them Scheisser zero five? Yeah, that's mainly Dortmund fans. Yeah, Dortmund fans. Zero four. Zero four. Zero uh, four. Are, they, are they missing who it is? Do you think? Um, maybe. Uh, I, I mean, I can understand why they got rid of him. Right. Um, because it, uh, a is is an enormous earner, and it right. seems from. The, the, the talk around the campfire at the moment they want to get all their money together to spend it on a big contract extension for Leon Goretzka there's talk that they'll uh, one of the, one of the, the German papers I think it was kicker this week said they that they're willing to offer him 10 million euros a year I mean that is <laughs> unbelievable right um, but the, the fact that they've got Huntelaar off the wage bill they've got Herveders off the, the the wage bill, Sydney Sam's contract was terminated as well. No big, big ramble fan. <laughs> fan. He's, a, he's a big. Ra- I, I, I looked. Well, at- I meant to say you're big fans of him, but yeah. he's probably a big fan of you. As I, was, well. I was trying to do a bit of research on Sydney Sam because he hasn't been mentioned on the ramble for for a while. But he's not he's not doing too much, is he? I know he's gone off to Bochum. Yeah, uh, but I, I think with Herbert is it was very much. Tedesco, the coach, saying, "I want to stamp my authority." Another young this, coach in the Bundesliga. Tedesco, how old is he? Surname means or? German in Italian. Does it really? Yeah. There we go. <laughs> it's all, also very gentlemanly. I accidentally poked him in the face with my microphone last night. He was very understanding. It was your microphone, was it? That's what you call it. <laughs> That's Andy Brassel there. <laughs> I must remember to thank him. <laughs> um, right. We, we, it does say irreverent on your bio. Yeah. To be fair. We've gone through all the. You know, if for a moment they don't put a 30-pass move together and, and score a goal or something. Well, is this the coach for us? Are we playing the right way? Do you think that Letty fans are, are just just happy, as James says, that their situation is normal? You know, there was such an up-and-down club for, for many, many years. Do you think that's it? Because football fans are notorious for forgetting recent history and, yeah, and becoming um, quite fickle. And as faithful as Atleti fans are, mm-hmm. they're no different to a certain extent. Right. I mean, I, the last time I went to see them at home was what, January against uh, Betis. And they're winning one nil, grinding it out in typical fashion. Yep. They start getting booed when they were holding it in the corner. Mm. It's unbelievable. <laughs> but they it's, are... it's like, but this is what they do. Yeah, but that for, is what for, they do. For, for goodness sake. But look, you know how hard they are to beat. I mean, we we saw them in the Madrid derby last year. Mm. They were one nil down to to Madrid. Madrid. And they were had... really poor for two thirds of that, weren't they? Yeah, Atletico. Atleti managed to get out of there with a point. Yeah, someone mentioned earlier, I think it was James, that no team wants to play them. You talk about Champions League sort of draw for the knockout stages. No team wants Atletico, and I imagine it being a bit like that scene in Clockwork Orange where he has to have his eyes open <laughs> and he has to watch. It's, it's absolutely <laughs> relentless, like two, like two hours. You know? But I think we should have a sweepstake on how quickly um, Simeone gets Diego Costa to lose that ex- excess weight in minutes. <laughs> it'll be in minutes. I mean, it'll be that is it. He's off straight away. He lost that straight away. Yeah, maybe not minutes. By the end of the week. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. Don't come back if you haven't lost it by the end of the week. <laughs> You'll just punch it off. I him. can't remember what the original question was. What was the original question? Um, about about Atletico and how they play? Yeah, it was just they're, they're, they're so hard to beat, aren't they? They are. They're, they're the ne- Northern Ireland of Spain. They never know when they're beating. <laughs> I, 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 yeah. I'd like to know if there's. If there's if that's there's, the thing. If Simeone goes, <laughs> get him Michael O'Neill. Mike, that's the <laughs> job. Now you're talking. Can he still, can he still live in Edinburgh, though? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> how long is it? I'll commute. Um, as, as, long, as long as they take set pieces yeah. like, like they already do, I can see Gary. Gareth McCauley playing for Atletico. Yeah, I can Steaming in at the back yeah. post, Godin style. Him Gareth, and Godin would get on famously. Gareth Over McCau- a pie, yeah, come on. Gareth McCauley's <laughs> one of those players who you think, he's only been around the Premier League in about three or four seasons, but he's already like 42 or something. <laughs> he's, he's quite old, Gareth He's like he's, he's a mid to late 30s. Well, playing under Poulis will age. It ages a man. Yeah, <laughs> he, ages he, a man. he lived at but the bottom of the hill. If I could finally get this. Enforcer. Yeah. Luke, Luke's the enforcer. I'm the Gattuso. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> and I'm the PL, I would like and to And Joe think. Jordan will be here in a minute. <laughs> <laughs> Andy said that the regular Turkish delight that you buy in the Shops here, the Turk, the Turkish delight in Turkey is, and I quote, a million times better. Yeah, I, queried, I queried the, the number a million, Marcus and he, talking st- about, he doubled down on it. Marcus talk, is talking about the mass-produced chocolate bar Turkish delight, which is that that kind of 
yeah. ruby red stuff in chocolate. Horrible. It's not stuff. Turkish delight. No. Exactly. <laughs> no. Yeah. yeah. Turkish delight is is um is not anything to do with chocolate. It's dusted with like powdery sugar, isn't it? Exactly. It's, it's the best. It's quite perfumey. The yeah, best like, half time like... snack I've ever had at a football ground. I was working. I was telling Marcus earlier at the the old gantry at White Hart Lane, which was right up the top at the top of this winding staircase. You're really isolated from everything else and you felt like you're kind of halfway into outer space. Because we were so isolated and we couldn't get anything in this winter game, someone came up at half time with a bottle of R. White's lemonade and a little box of Turkish Delight. What? It's a bit like that, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, they they sound like a (laughs) paedophile. It's quite an eclectic mix. Yeah. Yeah. I'm going to go to see the grey hair of Andy Russell at the top. I'm going to go all the way up to this gantry and what I'm going to bring with me is some lemonade (laughs) and some Turkish delight. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Just if if, if I may, very quickly, a good friend, two good friends of mine went to go and see the Tour de France and um, I think they went to the Alpe d'Huez stage. Yeah. And um, one of them was moaning about the heaviness of his bag the whole time. <laughs> so the other one said, because uh, they were climbing up this mountain, mm. walking up it, and the other one said, look, I'll take the bag. Look, it's only fair that we share the bag because you know, it's heavy and I'll do an hour, you do an hour, whatever. Got to the top and uh, found out that the reason it was so heavy is because it had two massive bottles of red wine in it. <laughs> 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 and, and the words of my friend, he went, and that's the last thing you want to drink after you've walked three hours yeah. outdoors <laughs> on a boiling hot summer's day. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> Lovely old There job. we go. Anyway, that's, that's it for this week. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, but basically, he had the feeling that they were going for an A, A, A-list striker. They were, and they ended up with a kind of A-minus striker. Did Matroglu play under Magat at Fulham? <laughs> Possibly. He definitely played at Fulham. A, a glorious period in their history. <laughs> Absolutely <laughs> glorious. They signed him for big money, I believe, didn't yeah, they? And he didn't score did. a single goal yeah, or something he, like that. Yeah, it, yeah. it didn't work out for Matroglu at Fulham. But uh, Galatasaray nicknamed the Aslani, the Lions, and yeah... Baphetimi Gomez is the perfect fit. Yeah. Because his goal celebration right. is alive. like a big exactly. cat. Yeah. Can, can Basic Shakir... It's, it's a um, panther, though. It's kind of a... Oh, it is, it's, yeah, it's but I, I, that's, why I, family. With, that's yeah. why I went with big cat. Yeah. Part of the yeah. same family. <laughs> yeah. I mean, it's, it's quite George Galloway-ish in the, yeah, how he goes about it. But people... Yeah. people... <laughs> <laughs> well, don't talk about... What are you bringing up gorgeous George Galloway for? <laughs> <laughs> Would you like me to drink the milk? <laughs> <laughs> oh, <God. laughs> How has it come to this? How has, How it, come has it never to come has, to this before? I, well, true enough. Has the milk gone stale for Galatasaray? That is the question. Yeah, pretty, pretty, pretty much. And yes, I am um, speaking for experience. <laughs> and Anguissa said in an interview with uh, La Provence, he said, well, no disrespect to Leon, but we don't just want to beat them. We want to absolutely destroy them. Why say that? Loving it. And I'm loving it. Why say and, that? Uh, and, and so, obviously, someone photocopied that they talked about it um in training and, and friday uh, at lyon and on saturday by saturday someone had um photocopied it laminated it and put it up on the dressing room wall so they could look at it before say, and after th- training that just motivates an opposition it's ridiculous Who it's was- ludicrous so and anyway on the way off once lyon had got their late winner marcelo of course yes v- very very urbane gentleman mature 30 years old. Well, not on the basis of this, speaks, Andy. Speaks five languages. Okay. Come on, give me the build-up. Okay, swear in five languages. Yeah, I'm going to say. Uh, you know, so, someone, someone who's very much the dad of the team, he thought the, the best, <laughs> most dignified way to celebrate the win would be to take his Leon shirt off uh-huh. and show it to Loic, uh, Adil Rami from, well, pretty close range. It's quite a brave thing to do. Well, Rami's he, an absolute yeah. tank. He took yeah. his... his well, have you seen his eyebrows? No, are they very uh, well manicured? He's, yeah. a, okay. he's a lover, not a fighter, is as, as, as pa- <laughs> Pamela Anderson will attest. Oh, really? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Oh, a little insight there. Horncastle's yeah. wicked whispers. <laughs> <laughs> no, I mean, uh, I would not recommend you ever to watch Piers Morgan's life stories, but the one, one was... One <laughs> is, did, this you, is this your source? One, Piers one, Morgan one is recently your had Pamela Anderson on it in which she talked about her relationship with Adil Rami. Me and you know how did you happy watch they the, are uh, together. Did you watch the Jim David someone? <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. He did. He did. He was nodding along. Um, going, I agree with that point. Taking it back, I can to, empathise with that. Back to the football. <laughs> Steve might be mad. Um, so the Confederations Cup in 2009, in South Africa. I think there was only four, maybe five British journalists there. Brazil won it, beating America and or the US in the final. Three yes, two. that's right. And the US lost. The US beat Spain. They did in the semi final in mm. Bloemfontein. And the, it was a very relaxed tournament. So Brazil, there was a lot of hoo-ha around, but everybody else was hardly any journalists there. It was incredibly easy to talk to, to players. So there was uh, the four Spaniards who all played in England. So there was uh, Pepe Reina, 
of Arabaloa, um, Javier Alonso, and Torres. Um, and so in the mix zone, it was, you know, one of them would come over and, and chat to the four or five of us after every game, and it, it was all very easy and it was very straightforward. And um, uh, that semi final, it was, it was kind of quite late. We knew we had this drive back to, to Johannesburg, which is another story because we broke down on the way back. But anyway, <laughs> um, all in the same car. Um, and I think Pepe Reina came out first after the semi final. And Spain had been this incredible unbeaten run, like 35 games or something. Mm. I think it was the world record unbeaten run. Mm. And Landon Donovan put a stop to it. Yeah. And um, Pepe Reina comes out and says, you know, actually, it's probably, if we're going to, if it's going to come to an end, he is as good a place as any. At least now that sort of pressure of a runs off and we can just start to focus on winning games. So, like, you know, in terms of right now, pieces, that's all we need. It's a you know, perfect load of quotes. And because it's really quiet, Torres then comes over to us. You know, he's inverted the mix zone dynamic. The, the players <laughs> come to the gym. Yeah. The only other time I've seen this was with a New Zealand reserve team goalkeeper, or New Zealand's reserve keeper, uh, after they drawn with Slovakia. Yeah. Came over to us and was, we're like, sorry, like, no idea who you are. <laughs> and you I mean, could be anyone. He just wanted, wanted to talk about his, his degree in marine biology or something. <laughs> <laughs> But anyway, but that's another story. Yeah. 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 So Thomas comes over to us and is like, "Right, anything, lads?" And we're like, "Oh, actually, we're kind of done." But on the other hand, you are Fernando Torres. We probably should take the opportunity <laughs> to have job. a chat to you. Yeah. How often do you highlight your hair? Um, yeah. So yeah, Torres has got this tattoo on his left forearm. He does, which is his own name in the Elvish language of Tengwa. So I said to him, "You know, you've obviously yeah, you're a big Lord of the Rings fan." You're in Bloemfontein, which is where Tolkien was born. Have you been to see any of the Tolkien sites? <laughs> and he 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 kind of he got really weirdly <coughs> sensitive about the tattoo. And then when, when he realised I wanted to talk about Tolkien, not about the tattoo, he suddenly incredibly engaged. What well, Tolkien was born here? When well, yeah, you can go and visit like the the home he grew up in. But he left when he was three because he he was in the garden and he got bitten by a spider, and his nurse had to suck the poison out, and his man panicked and sent him home to Birmingham. And so Torres then goes, well, yeah, that, that explains a lot because I'd always wondered why in Lord of the Rings you've got these really sort of sinister monsters, you've got the ring wraiths and, and whatever, but actually the last monster that Frodo has to fight is Shelob, the big spider. spider yeah. So Tolkien has this thing with spiders because he got bitten by a spider and he's, yeah, it makes sense. Blimey. So yeah, literally criticism with Fernando Torres. Yeah. <laughs> It's incredible. He should, he, presumably he's into Spider-Man as well if he likes that kind of uh, he likes that kind of thing. Well, maybe he is now, yeah. yeah. Or, do you, or do you mean Tolkien was into Spider-Man? I, I, yeah. <laughs> maybe he was Spider-Man. Yeah. That would be a story. I mean, taking it back to the football, Jonathan, as much as I am <laughs> <laughs> regretful to do so, um, it's your boys. The mailbag is back. Happy Saturday. We don't see anything wrong with a little conversational bump and grind here on the continent. And today's mailbag is no exception. Uh, I'm Luke Moore, and joining me this weekend, as ever, are the D'Angelo of European Football Punditry, Mr. Andy Brassel. I will definitely take I that. I thought you might. And to my Don't left, go of, there. To my Don't left go of course, there. sat next to him, the R. Kelly. Oh, Mr. God. <laughs> no, no, no. no. <laughs> James Horncastle. I mean, ignition aside, no. Yeah. Don't put that image in the listeners' heads. Yeah. I'm After the, the party, it's I the am, hotel lobby, James, and you know it. <laughs> I'll take Questlove from the roots. All right, Questlove. There. Yeah. Okay, and sat to my left, the Arthur Questlove <laughs> of European football poetry. Yeah. It's Mister James Horncastle. That is me. I mean, that go. makes sense, really. Like calling us the roots because we are kind of like you and Marcus's house band, aren't we? There we go. Yeah. Like yeah. that. Love that. Love that. Now we've got it, everybody. Uh, it's now time to turn our attention to the Greek Super League. Again, for the wrong reasons, uh, sadly. Uh, well, I say again for the wrong reasons. Last time we talked about the Greek Super League, Andy, you mentioned a story in which you were attending a game there and it all kind of went off in the stands and so on. And, and Greek football is quite infamous for this kind of thing. Volatile. Vol- volatile is a very good word mm. to describe it. And of course, the Pauk owner, Ivan uh, Savidis, said that uh, he's very regretful of the um, the actions that he took. When Second he- Amendment enthusiast, <laughs> Ivan Savidis. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he, to relate it back to, to a hot, that, political hot potato. He came on the pitch, elsewhere. of course, with two bodyguards. This was at the end of the game when a goal. You've got two bodyguards, mate. What do you need a gun for? Yeah. <laughs> 
<laughs> Maybe, I mean, it is legal to carry a gun in Greece. Is it right? Okay. Um, but he came on the pitch t- and to say to his players, right, they, we're not having this, abandon the game and so on because they had a, a goal chalked out for offside and it was an absolute disgrace and blah, blah, blah. And of course, the league has now been suspended. For my money, Andy, the only action is if we're worried about people coming on the pitch with guns, we have to arm referees. <laughs> okay? This is the only course of action. The more people that have guns, the safer it is. But, but people who have seen this will think, hang on a minute, that's a bit, <laughs> this is a bit of an overreaction to suspend the league. And I, I mentioned it to you earlier, Andy, and you said, well, actually, it's, it's, it's the thin end of the wedge, essentially. So much has been going on. So, so bring the listeners up to date with why this league has been suspended and, and what the background to all this is. F- firstly, I think we have to say, for a little bit of context, that when we hear Pauk owner Ivan Savidis came on the pitch with a gun, it makes it sound like he was brandishing a gun. Yeah. He was not brandishing a gun. He had it in it his holster. He had it in his holster. Yeah. Very much like Gareth Available. from the office it's, with it's, his mobile phone. I was going to say, it's a holster that James Horncastle carries for his mobile phone. <laughs> yeah. And do you, know why, do you know why people carry their mobile phones on their belt? Because there's no room in their pocket for all, because of all the girls' phone numbers. That's right. Uh, yeah. That's <laughs> right. That's why. Carry on, sorry. But... Obviously, it's un- unacceptable. But all I'm saying is, if the gun hadn't been on it, his belt, would it have been any no. more acceptable? No, no. It We're talking about the owner of the club <laughs> coming on the pitch to say to the referee, "I mean, that's bad enough. You, you've yeah. disallowed our goal for a borderline offside, and I'm I'm not having it." He's he, but the, um, uh, Savida said that he came onto the pitch and all. He's he's very remorseful to protect the interests of the club. Well, to protect the interests of the club, but also to stop. Ten, th- th- tens of thousands of fans rioting and I thought well that's not going to calm people down if Marcus strong. I heard the he, peacekeeper he, he's actually the official uh, VAR representative <laughs> <laughs> and he wanted to look at it again and he just wanted to get a bit of a closer look that's all it was yeah yeah. maybe he was going to do what um, people in the Bundesliga have done uh, the coaching assistants and sporting directors um, this year and go, look 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 at the goal on my phone you can see it <laughs> yeah. which, which is happening look at the goal on my day. gun sorry yeah. <laughs> listeners won't have been able to see that but the gesture Andy was making I thought he was suggesting that Bundesliga um, sporting directors pull a gun yeah. <laughs> <laughs> rather than just point to something I was like, yeah. so, somebody, the whole holster uh, thing has got it twisted yeah. Yeah. ever since the office Some, as we said somebody's but, got to get fired Andy <laughs> yeah and not the gun <laughs> exactly yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah, that's right. Um, just to finish then, uh, let's go to the Bundesliga. Hamburg have been relegated, of course, along with Cologne. What's happening with their clock? Andy. But are, Well, no one knows because there's a huge plume of black smoke in front yeah. of it covering it up. Yeah. It was still ticking at the end, which I found very disappointing. Yeah, it's got to stop. Some sort of explosion, some sort of, um, not aside from the flares that went on, there needs to be some sort of marking of it by the clock. If you're going to be so smug that you're going to have a clock... Yeah, remind us yeah. what the clock was. Sorry. So the clock is there to, 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 to count up how many days or years or whatever it is it's been since they were relegated. That's right. No, no, because they've, they've, they've never been relegated. Been relegated. Yeah. 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 It's, okay, since point. the inception yeah. of the league then, yeah. Yeah, in 1963. Mm. So it, okay. it's got years, months, days... Hours, seconds. Does it, does it, surely a fan from a rival club, maybe St. Pauli or something, should take a hammer to that clock then? And just be like, no, no. Well, I, I heard someone saying, well, they're just going to have to reset it. I mean, that's ridiculous. No, get rid of the clock. Like, imagine, if, even if they get promoted like next year, which I, I think they've got a fairly good chance of doing, you think, well, you know, if you're going there for the first game of the season, we've now been in the Bundesliga for 16 minutes. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, that's I mean, you can't really have that, can and, you? Andy, is there any any sort of talk that they might um, get rid of their manager? Will, will this time next week, will we be saying tits out or not? <laughs> well, it's gone tits up. <laughs> it sure has. No, that, that'll, be, that'll be in nine months' time. <laughs> that's again in nine months' time, yeah. yeah. Uh, Christian Tits has done an absolutely fantastic... <laughs> get, get your tits out. <laughs> Are they going to get their tits out? Is that, is that what's going to happen? <laughs> tits are here to stay yeah. <laughs> is that right okay tits are you, here to stay you've been sitting on that for a week haven't you yeah well <laughs> I'll be honest there was a certain amount of satisfaction in when they were relegated <laughs> he's, he's, he's done a really great job um, mm, and great it, tits yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but he's probably yeah. um, he's probably feeling a bit blue at the moment. Isn't he? <laughs> but uh, go on, Andy. I won't even bother. Yeah. I, I think when you bear in mind that they've been preparing for relegation for a good couple of months now. Stop it! Is it because so he's done a good job, but is he has not got the support he needed? <laughs> Yeah. Oh dear! He just needs to strap himself in and get on with it next. Come week. on! <laughs> hey, my goodness! There we are. And, uh, you're...
Aren't yes, we? we are. Yeah. We're going earlier and earlier. James, are you are you generally plucky at this time in the morning, or are you sort of more of a uh, evening guy? And he guy? did say plucky. No, I, <laughs> I'm most productive at this this hour. Oh yes, yes. yeah. You kept that light hidden under a bushel. Exactly. Oh, fair so, enough. Yeah. I'm still Prepare. asleep. This is a recorded message. Yeah, <laughs> we've got we've replaced Andy with an Andy Brussels soundboard. <laughs> 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 It's like when Tupac, um, the hologram was at Coachella. Yeah, is like that, that right? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Imagine the, the research to go, go into making you a hologram, Andy. The, the size the of the minutes brain. of research. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It'd be absolutely outrageous. Yeah. It'd be like as many languages as C3PO. If you've got one of those 1980s <laughs> supercomputers in that pool of water. <laughs> M- Marcus, no one likes to be compared to C3PO. It's, it's terribly emasculating. How dare and you? And not just because his arms got pulled off in the Empire Strikes yeah. Back. Don't give it away. Marcus, can I say, you, you fit on something there. That's a spoiler. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think Andy is more like C-3PO than any other Star Wars character. <laughs> and may you I say, Hornzo's Chewbacca. You've got a bit of the R2-D2 about you. Yeah, that'll do. <laughs> <laughs> that'll do. He was the more popular of the two, and I I'll obviously Jabba the Hutt. <laughs> yeah. oh, hey, how about that, eh? Yeah. So they were doing a lot of, there was a lot of potential business. Uh-huh. Uh, it looked like Jerome Boateng was going to go to Paris mm-hmm. Saint-Germain. He, he didn't go in the end, um, even though they knew what the price was forever. And Bayern were what was very price, clear Andy? about it. 50 million. Uh, and <sighs> also, that- also, Andy, they got Tuckle. Remember, it took us like, by the way, guys, thanks for calling me, but I've already accepted PSG. <laughs> you stuck with Nico Kovac. Yeah. Yeah. There's, a, there's a bit of a rivalry going there because as James said, you know, with Tuchel cool, and then some of these signings, but some of the quotes that uh, were coming out from uh, Bayern Munich were saying, you know, you, you, you can't do this kind of thing with Bayern Munich, you know, and Bayern president, <laughs> Early Hernes, uh, we all remember him, um, uh, wants the, the, the PSG sporting director to be sacked for his contact, uh, conduct in all. Yeah, this. Antero Enrique, who used to be at um, Porto. Yeah, he, I would advise PSG to replace the sporting director. The man is not a great advert for the club. Marcus, not up to him, knows it? Yeah. Which, no. is you it they, they to Luke, Luke is, has Early Hurness always been a great advert for Bayern? Yeah, possibly not. Yeah. But can, I, can, I, Wait, can I just say, when they when he was in prison, they were, <laughs> they, 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 they were still uh, <laughs> selling T-shirts at, at, the, at the tube station yeah. at Fruit Manning as you come up to the Allianz yeah. Arena saying, uh, uh, do is the best man. Oh, really? Uli Hernes really? really went on to say in that quote, and I should know how bad he is. I've been in prison. <laughs> I should know, because I, I owed Fair the, enough, then. the German yeah. state between three and seven million euros. Um, <laughs> his stock's really full. Am I the only person? Yeah. I mean, like, well, it's, it's interesting, funny. I, I no, it's interesting you say that, because I was saying that to Anna just before we came on, that, that I watched, uh, it was on a clip on YouTube of just Mbappe's performance in that game to really kind of uh, hone in on what he was doing. And I just thought he was a little bit more flash than normal. Obviously, he's got phenomenal score. And there's nothing wrong with that, but it it is going to rile opposition defenders, rightly or wrongly. It, it, it felt like it felt. Sorry, it felt to me uh, as as Neem were doing whatever they could to level the playing, the playing, the playing field. I guess to, to use a pun, you've got to bring and, them down to your level, yeah, they all, and then you can maybe you've got a better chance of beating them because they also clearly hadn't watered the pitch. The pitch looked so dry, it was so bouncy <laughs> yeah. and bobbly, and, that and it's that that part of the world as, yeah. as, as well where it's going to be dry. Yeah, so I they had watered it one hundred percent. Neem played a great game. There's no mm. doubt about that. And they got back to two all as well. Yeah, they they came back back here we go. Another. They're at it again. And Ariola actually justified his inclusion by making a, a couple of good saves, especially at, at, at two two. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> Hornzo, Hornzo's fuming. Well, he's, James is very much in the Gigi Buffon Appreciation Society. Yeah, and we'll I mean, what's the justification here? Just like we're saving Gigi for the for the Champions League. Or Gigi's what? got binned off, mate. Too cool. Gigi's got a heart like a dustbin. Too cool. <laughs> yeah, as as has not really dealt with it. it. He's he said, well, coward. You know, I, exactly. <laughs> I want to I want to rotate. I'm, I've not really worked out how I'm going to play it yet. Which I think is showing any sort of doubt when you're in a position like coach of Paris Saint-Germain is a bit crazy has the temerity to turn up at the coaching forum in neon this week only guy not to wear a suit Oh, Comes really? in, crew neck, crew neck jumper. Who does he think he is? Uh, People in Garth House Castle. Yeah. Castle. <laughs> you wear a crew neck jumper at any opportunity. <laughs> You'd probably wear a crew neck jumper at your own wedding. Yeah. yeah. Um, <laughs> Not wrong, Luke. You were yeah. there. The reception. Yeah. <laughs> but, but, and it's just, it's, you know, we know he's an absurdly talented footballer. But in terms of fitness, in terms of stamina, in terms of seeing um, Real Madrid through late parts of games, especially in the Champions League, I mean, obvious ones you think of um a Bayern at the Bernabeu in, in in extra time you think of the 2014 final um you think of the final itself in 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 2017 these are all like supreme Marcelo performances where he's you know like the greatest Brazilian fullbacks more than a fullback more than a halfback 
almost a midfielder at the the, the same time and, you know, striding into the centre, underlapping as well as overlapping, um, being an incredible goal threat. But after that, there was the sense that, a bit like Patrice Evra, I suppose, he he became more and more reluctant, Mm -hmm. or I guess as you get further into your 30s, that sort of morphs into unable to cover back once Mm -hmm. you've lost the ball. And And kissing chickens. Yes. (laughs) Yes. <laughs> mm. Let's hope he doesn't do that, though. <laughs> why, why not? Why not? Mm. Uh, well, there is a few reasons. But people would be fine Raw with that. Raw Salmonella being one of them. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. There's nothing wrong with kissing chickens. But yeah, raw oh. chicken will... Well, we'll, we'll ask the chickens. Well, no, absolutely. Yeah. Okay. They need to consent. But, Marcus... <laughs> Uh, love and care to one's animals is, you know... Oh, OK. I see as long as it doesn't that. cross a, a, a line. Indeed. I mean, yeah, <laughs> a very dis- line. A very, a very, yeah. Bring up some more Madonna. <laughs> right. But yeah, anyway. Exactly. <laughs> Andy, how could you follow that? No, go on, you were saying about Marcella. I was, I was going to say, and you were nowhere near, <laughs> James. <laughs> so I'm still mentally in Italy. <laughs> uh, well, let's move on to Serie A, because James was there in Milan to see Juventus win 2-0. Uh, Gonzalo Higuain missed a penalty and then was sent off for two very quick successive <laughs> bookings. Let's show you what you're missing out on, chaps. Yeah. That's what he said to me into that game. I'll show you what you're missing oh. out on. James, what's going on there? Uh, well, fired up, was he? All season, uh, and this is part of Higuain's playing style, he's very fired up all the time. He looks angry at the best of times, even mm-hmm. when he's scored two or three goals. He's an ang- underrated angry man. He is a very angry man. And Gattuso, who also has a reputation of being an angry <laughs> man, but instead he's quite chill and quite measured, has been telling him all season to control himself because it doesn't set the best example for the, you, the teammates around him. And often might lose like five, ten minutes of a game yeah. where you're just sort of cussing out teammates, cussing out the ref, sort of lost in a Sometimes it may be good, sometimes it may be shit. Yeah, Gattuso doesn't sound that calm with that little sound <laughs> like that. Yeah. But before the game, Gattuso had said, I pulled Gonzalo aside and I've said, look, I know this is a game that's very personal to you, but just keep your emotions in check. Mm-hmm. And I, I can see you really, really tense. Can you imagine hearing that from the people? <laughs> <laughs> or just Joe Jordan, which would be going around in my mind. And they were reunited with the other Sometimes maybe shit. <laughs> would it be the equivalent of Oli Herder sitting somewhere down and going, look, look, you've got to do this properly. You've got to make sure you fill out that form properly. Get, get Otherwise, we work together. <laughs> Otherwise... <laughs> I use an accountant, 400 quid, it costs me a year. Once a year, that's all it costs. Get it all done that way. Don't worry about it. Yeah, I think that's what it is, James, isn't it? But, yeah, anyway, back to it's like Gonzalo's really saying, Can anger I have a management seat, with, uh, <laughs> with Reno Gattuso. Uh, but, yeah, the crazy gang. I'd like to let's see him play Kenny Jacket, but there we are. <laughs> yeah. uh, let's move on to the Bundesliga, gentlemen. Um, where yeah. Borussia Dortmund, uh, there it is. Thank you, James. Uh, Borussia Dortmund are having a wonderful season. They beat Schalke in the derby. And, uh, they... Is this where the discussion from uh, players going abroad to prove their majesty? <laughs> well, I never rated... It's a great link, Luke. Well, to be fair, Andy, I never really rated Jaden Sancho until he went to Dortmund. <laughs> yeah. um, but, uh... I've never seen him play. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> he, uh, we got the winner of the derby, of course. Uh, Dortmund topped their Champions League group as well. 2-0 yeah. in Monaco. Head of Atletico Madrid, yeah. Yeah, so they'll, they'll avoid uh, some of the big names. Um, we wait to see if, if Bayern and Juventus slip up uh, this evening, of course, at the time of recording. Uh, but it's always good to top you group in, in, in the Champions League of course they're having a great season Andy how, how highly do you, do you rate this Dortmund side can they win the title and can they go far in the Champions League yeah, well, I think the, the interesting thing is that a lot of people are saying they need to keep the nine point gap ahead of Bayern because of course they've got a seven point gap ahead of uh, second place Borussia Mönchengladbach until Christmas it's if they're going to win the league Heinke's insurance just, just <laughs> yeah, in case exactly. Heinke's comes back you can yeah. never be sure yeah, yeah. that's true and I, he's I, like fucking Mike Myers from the Halloween film <laughs> <laughs> just for you you've seen him off he pops up behind the hedge <laughs> in a fucking in a hockey mask yeah but I think and takes the title from your, your mantelpiece <laughs> and then showers himself in beer yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and just screams I'm only 94 years old <laughs> fucking fucking loads more in me still got it yeah <laughs> I think this is a season where they could do it. Now, not top four. I don't think that's possible at all. But you look at where other teams who should be challenging for that are. I mean, you look at, at the moment, it's clear that Barcelona, closely followed by Sevilla and Atletico, there's no one in their class at this very moment. Why aren't you daring to dream Mm. for Alaves? Hang on. Dream for them. (laughs) Hang on. Hold hold them up to uh, believe in better. 
Hang the F on. <laughs> <laughs> I think if you look at them finishing in the top six, you look where teams like Real Sociedad are at the moment, Athletic are at the moment. We where, want fourth. Where, we where want Valencia fourth. are at the moment. <laughs> yeah. Where Villarreal are at the moment. Are you worried they're going to catch your beloved Sevilla? Is that what you're worried about? <laughs> <laughs> is that what this is, Andy? <laughs> you well, think top six Rumble. is realistic for him? I know. I, th- I, think, I think top six is doable. Yeah, I, I think, really think, I think it's doable. James, Luke and I certainly want them to finish in the top four. Yeah. I can certainly say that. No one, no one said about not wanting them to James looks fairly four. unbothered. Yeah. To be honest, either way, he don't care. That's unlike James. Yeah. I'm indifferent. Yeah. <laughs> James is still wearing his woolly hat in this whole, I know, whole studio. Hat, That's jacket. A, a jacket as well. Yeah. That's it. He does, the temperature doesn't even bother him. Yeah. It's magnificent. You know what he said earlier when he came in? I said, are you going to take your hat off when he went, Brexit means Brexit. <laughs> <laughs> I've decided to wear the hat. Yeah. I'm not changing my mind That's now. It. Sweat yeah. pouring down his face. <laughs> yeah. It's the will I'm, of the people. I'm still doing it. Yeah. <laughs> all right then, let's move on. to the. And so th- these are all the reasons why it didn't work out. Okay, he was inflexible. Whereas I think Leverkusen suits him a lot better. You look at the team he's got, you look at the players they've got, you look at the way they want to play, you look at the fact there's not so much pressure, they're not expected to win the league. If they can just get back into Europe and you know maybe even the Champions League, that would be fantastic. But as we record, they're four points off um, six in the European places. So it's something that they could get amongst. And really his job will be to and already has been to bring back a, a bit of the joy mm-hmm. really to, to Leverkusen which there wasn't you look at Leon Bailey he's gone totally off the boil and it's been really quite dull tense football yeah. under Heiko Herlich and they were looking to get rid of him for mm. a while they wanted to get Hasenhutl in didn't happen I think Bosch is a very palatable alternative and already I think it's quite interesting how say Kai Havertz who really is going to be the beating heart of that team going forward. He's mm-hmm. 19 years old. Until he moves second player. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. We'll give him 18 months. Which, yeah. which literally could have happened while we've been in the studio. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but already Bosch has got Havertz on side. Mm-hmm. And he said, look, we've learned a load off him in two weeks. Mm-hmm. And it's great fun. And he knows how to relate to the young players. Yes. And so for someone like that, who's young, who's arguably the premier talent of the team, he's a leader he's already started to get important people on side. So I think he's got a bit of time. Yeah, you sort of spice things up a bit older, uh, Bosch Spice. Perfect. Anyway, um, <laughs> we're going to... Uh, You've been sat on that, Marcus, for a while. I, I wish Two people could see. For about four or five minutes. Yeah, I wish people could see the moment in Marcus's mind when he thinks of it and he thinks, right, let's get all this chutney out of the way. He's he got delivered that. that with his head down as well in that yeah. kind of knowing that yeah. I've got one here. Hey, that yeah. was the no-look pass. Uh, and have you finished, by the way? Sorry, yeah. you, you were saying something that actually was worthwhile. I have now. Oh, yeah. Forgive have me, you, brother. Have you got anything else to say? <laughs> Tell us what you want, what you really, got... really want. <laughs> <laughs> oh, dear. Fine. Oh, dear. Good old Philip Alley. What a defender he is. Um, anyway, yes, uh, back to the mailbag. Let's have another dip in there. Uh, Jules says this. I wanted to ask for your opinions on minimum fee release clauses, particularly in relation to La Liga where every player has the aforementioned clause built into their contract. Do these clauses help or hinder Spanish clubs in comparison to the rest of Europe? Do players outside of Spain like a release clause? Would more clauses stop player stockpiling by clubs such as Chelsea? Andy, what do you reckon of that? Spanish football. And, you know, I I think there's always a a slight misreading of it. You know, when uh, people would say, you know, Porto value Hulk at 100 million euros and 100 million rated um, centre forward. And, you know, people would say he's not a 100 million euro player. Well, they were never actually saying he was worth 100 million euros. They were just simply protecting themselves, just as Benfica are doing with uh, Joao Felix at the moment, who's got a 120 million uh, release clause. Um, (laughs) I was just thinking about what that would be like to say in a Scottish accent. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> <laughs> well, we'll find out the, the, the mics are on James by the way yeah, yeah. <laughs> what Joao Felix Joao Felix what, what, what kind of, what, name a Scottish celebrity I'll do it for you any right now any Scottish celebrity <laughs> could, could be any could, could be, be any, any. Yeah. it doesn't have to have been in Bond films yeah exactly <laughs> doesn't even have to be male go on who you got what do you want to yeah Connery I mean or <laughs> Oh, well, it's wait- an obvious one I was waiting for you to say Nicola Sturgeon I thought you might go Sturgeon actually yeah. Billy Connolly Joao Felix <laughs> <laughs> but you know you asked for Conray Joao Felix uh, it is quite satisfying actually can you do Sturgeon I beg your pardon um, uh, oh, maybe next time maybe okay. next time let me have a okay. think about that one next time yeah, we talk on. about Joao Felix you've got to keep the public waiting true <laughs> um, Andy 
And but he's magda. He's like a he's like a shark. You know, there's one drop of blood yeah. in the ocean. You can't find it. <laughs> it's unbelievable. There it is. Um, before we end, just going back to the the first little bit of correspondence, um, Andy from from Shane. We talked about hipster footballers. What your favourite hipster footballer from yourself? Oh, it has to be Ever Benega. Really? I mean, <laughs> can you can you think of a, a, another player whose first contribution to European football was being caught masturbating on a webcam, <laughs> who ran himself over with his own car? <laughs> And then I didn't expect that. Then that's not a hipster football. That's then, a hapless football. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then, after running himself over with his own car, went on to be man of the match in the Europa League final against Liverpool. I mean, that, uh, that, that is the perfect career arc by any standards. And it's the pulls. Yeah. And we are joined by the man who sings the songs that remind him of the good times. It's James Horncastle. See, Las Ramblas. And the man who sings the songs that remind him of the better times. It's Andy <laughs> Brazzle. Nice. Hello. Now let's all drink a whiskey drink and a vodka drink. <laughs> it's Christmas almost. It, indeed, yeah. We're on the continent, but we're still tub thumping. We are. Yeah. I had a whiskey last night. It was, <laughs> Did you? It was a Balvenie. Yeah, very so, nice. Uh, but said better in Marcus's Scottish accent. So people, people listening will imagine James <laughs> sat in his very nice apartment up in Northwest London, which it is. I've been there. Very nice, in an easy chair, surrounded by many leather bound. <laughs> yeah, <books>. swilling a <laughs> lovely Rich smell of mahogany. Belvenny aged fifteen years. What actually happened? And I can tell you exclusively what happened. <laughs> He was at the end of a bar in some dive club in Soho and he downed it in one. <laughs> That's what happened. So, yeah. So, if you're new to On the Continent, we've started with Chumbawamba and Scottish whiskey. Yes. Uh, we are on the continent, trust me, though. Two of um, Britain's best exports. Yeah. <laughs> and we're going to need them. We're going to need we them. We are. In yeah. these dark days. How, how is Brexit going to offend? Uh, sorry, offend? How, it offends everyone. How, how's, how's Brexit going to affect Chumbawamba's album sales, Andy Brassel? <laughs> Go on, Andy. We have, got the run you're, order you're here <laughs> to answer the tough questions that Luke yeah. and I can't. Yeah. Yeah. He's I... been knocked down by that. <laughs> he's stunned. I'll get up again. <laughs> Do you know what? He's been, but, uh, yeah? yeah. You suffer from long term memory loss, yeah. dear. I think you're looking like, at me blankly. That was their second top ten hit. All right, but, but amnesia. Was it? Yeah, if I remember correctly. But Marcus, um, <laughs> one person that wow, has been, that's good knowledge. One person that has been knocked down. Yes, and will get up again. He's, I'm doing it for you. I know you are. <laughs> oh, yeah. This is like uh, Tiki Taka. This yeah. is. Uh, it's Jose Mourinho. Yeah, Jose is. Mourinho, which Mourinho also hates. Tiki Taka, by the way, <laughs> he does. Yeah. He certainly does. Of course, I mean, you should never read anything into like transfer speculation from Instagram or anything like that. But I couldn't help but notice mm -hmm. that Cristiano Ronaldo is currently in, enjoying a holiday in the Middle East, isn't he? There was um, there was uh, a, a sort of selfie of him with uh, uh, an eagle on his hand. Yes, yeah. and then he was also was like there really? he was also there striking was... a pose with Anthony Joshua. Yeah, he looked. He looked. By the way, can I just say I'm pleased you reminded me of that. <laughs> Because I don't know if everyone around the table has seen this photo or people listening have seen this photo, but I implore you to seek it out because I don't know what Cristiano was doing <laughs> letting that go out. Because he looks utterly ridiculous. He looks like he's got a lot of marbles in his mouth. And he also... <laughs> and, and, so... And it's also like a, a sort of uncharacteristic misstep by Ronaldo's ego here because yeah. he loves taking his shirt off. He loves looking out in great shape he is. And he is in great shape. But next to... Um, Anthony Joshua he looks like a toothpick yeah. and yeah. he looks absolutely I don't want to say pathetic but I mean physically pathetic is it the him. sort of thing that would diminish your self image enough to make you sign for Benfica <laughs> possibly <laughs> possibly just while, while we're, I just feel that like we're, while we're talking about crazy speculation of unlikely scenarios let's go all in uh, well, I, I, do you know what? I could give, I could be more generous to Ronaldo and say, do you know what? He's obviously not as vain as everyone says he is because he's allowed that photo to be taken well, and he's yeah, allowed it to can, be shared because can... he looks like a ten-year-old boy <laughs> next to Anthony Joshua. But you can, you, you can say that, can't you? Um, off, off the back of his biopic, you know, people say he's really vain and obsessed with his. Yeah, he's really vain and obsessed with his image. If you're obsessed with your image, there's no way you let that go out. George Mendes steals the show anyway. Look at us, we are the greatest. <laughs> that's the best bit. <laughs> even Ronaldo looks awkward. Yeah, even Ronaldo does. thinks this is too much, even for me. And I'm Cristiano Ronaldo. <laughs> yeah, I found that quite that eleven goals in sixteen league games. Oh, he's been a brilliant. Oh, he's made a brilliant yeah. contribution. Yeah. Uh, let's move on to Ligue 1 because a club who's been uh, featured heavily on this show is Monaco this season. <laughs> Uh, because of their nonsense, quite frankly, and poor Can't keep them quiet, can we, Marcus? Well, the, the lengths some teams will go to to get on here. Well, I tell you what, <laughs> and they are doing that, aren't they? they are. To the point of you and I have both seen them this season. Um, they've replaced Thierry Henry. 
already with uh, Leonardo Jardim. Uh, they only sacked uh, Leonardo uh, three months ago. And yeah. now he's back. What on earth's going on, Andy? Mm. Why, Basically. Why, why did it... I, I, to be honest, I'm sure we covered it. I can't quite remember. But why did it go wrong with Jardim at the start of the he, season? He just said he had nothing left in the tank, didn't he? He couldn't, he couldn't lift the players anymore and that was that, mm. from what you were saying at the time. Well, yeah, I mean, he said it was at the beginning it was going to be his most difficult season ever. So... Good start. <laughs> Start yeah, it's, right it's, it's not 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 quite inspiring, <laughs> is it? This is going to be a shit show. Yeah, <laughs> all right. Look at the lads I'm left with. There's <laughs> 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 no disrespect to you lot, but I mean, none of the best ones. I mean, are we going for Portuguese red nap here? <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. I've got a lot of names in this envelope. All uh, right, yeah. Brendan Rogers. Is he, was he putting four keepers on the bench? <laughs> um, well, but what happens then in two months' time if he if he's failing? Does he get Henri back in? Well, Henri, I mean, his contract details. Uh, I think how long did he? I think he signed. He was there until in, he joined. He joined in on the eighteenth of October, and he signed quite a long deal. I didn't think it was he? a three-year deal yeah, yeah. worth seven million euro a season. That's mad. That, what are they thinking? <laughs> what were they thinking there, Andy? Oh, Twenty-one million euros for two league wins. <laughs> There's a lot, isn't it? Oh, yeah, well, you, you know, know Monaco, like, though. Ju- for, the, for those listening, they'll just sell a midfielder and that'll cover it. When I said that, when I said that, Andy did that thing he does in his mind where he looked around his amazing massive brain for a yeah. reason why Can't that wasn't ridiculous, it. and he just laughed. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but did, this is the absurd. Very good indeed, gentlemen. We have to start with with a blisteringly good game that happened in those Bundesligas. It was De Classica. Oh, how do the locals pronounce that, James? Uh, the Classica. Thank you. Yes. Uh, One of the games of the season. Remarkably Martin. restrained, unlike yeah. the match itself. Yes. Yes. Luke Moore, you were full of praise for this win. Yeah. Uh, let's just Dortmund. say I was pleased I didn't choose to watch West Ham Spurs instead, <laughs> uh, which was very nearly happened. Or Crystal Palace Spurs. Oh, Crystal Palace Spurs. Yeah, Sorry, yeah. yeah. Apologies. I didn't watch it. Either so, way. Yeah, 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 that's it. Um, <laughs> I was very, very pleased that I chose to watch the... Uh, the, the derby is that? It translates to the derby, right? Not the classic. No, it's the classic. The classic. It's, it's, okay, it's not yeah. a derby because they're not in the same city. Sure, are. okay. But I thought no, it's so, still be a derby match. Maybe, oh, like the derby d'Italia, for example. Yeah. Uh, El Clasico. That's, that's, that's a rare reception. In Spain, El Clasico translates to the derby, don't they? No. no. Oh, okay, I must have got that completely wrong. Yeah, that's El Derby. Okay, right. Good, good to know. That's why you're here. That's why you're here. Hmm? Yeah. Anyway, I enjoyed the game. You guys know what you're talking about. Crack yeah. on. Football <laughs> translates as rugby. I'm going to make a cup of tea. <laughs> in, in certain northern towns. Yeah. Right. That's it. <laughs> <laughs> right. That's your one. Uh, All right. Borussia Dortmund. Pretty mood today. <laughs> Something that might well come back to haunt him in the second half <laughs> if he carries on. Yeah, a battle will commence. No, but I, I, I do think that this is a, a serious point about... It sets to me. It sets a precedent. The, the French league have obviously said we'd quite like Rennes to do well. We'd quite like them to beat Arsenal. We'd quite like them to further progress in this tournament. Coefficient as and, well, exactly. And it's yeah. not. And it's not completely ridiculous to suggest in any way that if a team like a Leicester, for example, who forced mm. their way into the Champions League, and we in England all decide, or the English, the Premier League, or whatever, decide it's a brilliant story, and we'd quite like them to beat Atletico Madrid. Thanks very much. So we're going to let them have a weekend off. I mean, where does that leave us all is what I'm asking. Well, what it, what it leaves us is with the espo- responsibility being with the associations. They've got it in their power to change their fixture list. If they want to or don't want to, that's for the clubs to, to take up with them. It's not for UEFA to get involved. It's a bit like free movement. How you restrict it How you restrict it is up to the individual country. Andy, Brexit ask, ask, means Brexit. Ask yeah. James, he voted Brexit. <laughs> <laughs> and people I will be surprised not, to hear that. He is, he is, he is an, a, an underrated huge fan of England, as we saw at the World Cup. He doesn't like to talk about that because he's an Italian man of culture and all the rest of it. And indeed, he voted Brexit along with uh, Matt Scott. That, <laughs> that is completely untrue. <laughs> For spending four and a half years living in Italy and benefiting from freedom, all right, James. Schengen, I <laughs> categorically <laughs> voted to remain. Yeah. Oh, you don't like it the other way, do you? No, he's well, not, I mean, he's that, not. That, that is the kind of disinformation <laughs> that, the, that the 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 uh, the Leave campaign used. So you fake news? Can I, can yeah. I say this is this is a sort of <laughs> disinformation? Yeah. That's fake news. <laughs> uh, will you be supporting England in the UEFA Nations League semi final? Of course, I will. Yeah. Right, that's what we want to uh, know. Do you yeah. support Rennes? The, the, French Federation's decision to let Wren have a weekend off ahead of playing Arsenal. Mm. And do you support Mrs. May's what, deal? And, and what, I think our European what, partners should be allowed to do what they like. Okay. Fair yeah. enough. Fair enough. Oh, fair enough. Yeah. Can, I just, oh, can, I, I can I just say all this misinformation? It's <laughs> talking. Yeah, yeah, it does look uh, yeah, like that. That's, that's quite yeah. right in his latter Real yeah. Madrid days. I yeah. always have that. that when, I, when I see any, any part of that, that sort of. 
uh, end coda of yeah. uh, Mourinho at Real Madrid. It, 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 I always get that song "Sleeping in My Car" by Roxette. <laughs> yeah. That is the best head. observation of a person that, <laughs> since since I heard someone describe Ian Botham as an out of work chef on an oil rig. <laughs> <laughs> anyway alright so you think he might rock up at Inter you think he's going to be fancy for the job ahead of Jose Mourinho for example and he's in their thoughts really. yeah I yeah. think so okay alright let's move on um, to an email from thanks for that John let's move on to Seb Caddick who says hi chaps wondered if you guys could shed any light on Alexander Isaac the young T- Dortmund striker on loan from Vill- uh, on loan, sorry, at Willem Tway noticed he scored a hat trick of penalties at the weekend, then followed it up with a couple more goals. And Was it assists. a perfect hat trick? Um, I can't make <laughs> another thing. I don't think I don't know, I'd love to see that <laughs> yeah. from a penalty. Left, right, head. I think I'm right in saying. <laughs> That'd be special. I think I'm right in saying that it never used to be considered a hat trick if there was another goal in between to break it up. It had to be three goals in a row. Mm. And indeed, in cricket, a hat trick isn't just three wickets; it's three wickets and three balls, right? Yes. Yeah. That's changed over the years. Yeah, it has. Yeah. it has. It has. Cheapened the hat trick. It has. I, I don't imagine he scored one of the penalties with his head, James. But I, I don't have the information in front of me. <laughs> um, anyway, he's playing well. How is Isaac rated in Dortmund? Is he thought of as a long-term prospect at the club? And as he is young, tall, Swedish and making a name for himself um, in the Netherlands, how long until the inevitable Ibra comparisons happen? Keep up the good work. Now, to give people a bit more information, Alexander Isaac is, of course, um, also... Chris Isaac's son. Well, you fucking ruined the joke, man. <laughs> <laughs> you ruined it. I was going to say, of course, the singer of the classic 1989 single Wicked Game off the much underappreciated Heart-Shaped World album, uh, Andy, take it away. James, that is a disgrace from you. <laughs> My thunder's been stolen. There's the only reason I come here. It's not for insight, is it? <laughs> is that cost Dortmund a lot of money? And for that reason, even though he came... That's Alexander Isaac, not yeah. Chris Isaac, who is no, not, sorry, not that, touring German. That, no, that's, I apologise. It was a wicked game. <laughs> <laughs> you see, that's, that's why I said uh, Isaac. to one, give him the correct pronunciation of his name, and uh, B, under, undercut your... <laughs> shambles of a joke didn't even get there <laughs> didn't, even get to, didn't even get to the finish line didn't even get over the start line with that joke but he was, he was only it's si- not an exaggeration to say I only put that email in the show <laughs> to make that joke <laughs> so that's the, that's the level of, of animosity I'm feeling right now carry on sorry <laughs> That's the end, so it is. (laughs)